Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for Rebel on BET. Okay, so you guys, before we get into the review, I want to tell you guys that I actually got a chance to talk to Danielle Truitt on the phone Monday. It was a very, very nice conversation. Um, yeah, I didn't record it. We got disconnected at some point. So, you know, it just, and besides, it wasn't like that for me. I kind of wanted just to talk to her myself. I didn't think of it as like a, you know, put on YouTube type thing, but I just thought I would share it with you guys. Um, basically she explained to me that they really enjoy my reviews and that there are times when I'm doing a review and I say something and it's something that she was thinking in her head while the scene was taking place. So I thought that was really amazing. And, you know, she shared with me, you know, how she got the role and, and, you know, really how the role was really made for her and, just also how and this is something i just wanted to share with everybody because it's sometimes how i i i feel am i not you know uh making more money at this point why am i not doing more you know um of the work that i would you know really want to do which <clears throat> may not involve so much uh pain you know what i mean like uh, uh being in a news business is a very painful business sometimes because you have to live in another person's pain for eight hours in your day you know what i'm saying and Sometimes that can be a lot, you know what I'm saying? So I never felt like I wanted to do it forever. Um, but, you know, I do love what I do. But she said to me how she knows a lot of girls in the industry, Amber Riley, some other girls, you know, that are, are her friends, and she does theater. She was doing theater uh, more before this, you know, big break on Rebel. Um <clears throat> And she watched all of them have their big breaks, and she just knew that eventually it would happen for her. Knew that eventually God would bless her with the opportunity, and then here comes this show that I feel like when I watch it, I don't think I would have wanted anybody else to play this role. Um, <clears throat> she is so on it in every way, and, and it was nice to be able to tell her that and, and let her know um, that I see it all. I see the head-to-toe acting. I see the hair. I see the, the clothes. I see the vibe. You know what I'm saying? I get it. And and when you are an artistic person, when you do put out something and people get it, you know what I'm saying? Like even on YouTube, when people get my references or understand where I'm coming from, see my point of view, um, it's validation. You know what I'm saying? And regardless of what anybody needs, we need validation for the things that we put out into the world because you don't put it out there for just for yourself. You put it out there for other people. So you want to know that your point came across, that, you know, you spoke what you wanted to speak, you know? <clears throat> It, so to speak. <laughs> so it was a very good conversation and I really enjoyed talking to her and I really hope that I get a chance to talk to her again. Um, and, you know, John Singleton as well. Like, I, I really hope that that opportunity uh, finds its way to me, whatever that opportunity might be, um, because it would just be so amazing to work with John Singleton. Like, oh my God. <laughs> So this got the soda on rep. I'm saying I start off. Start off how I left off, okay? Y'all remember we left off with April, okay? Bullet in the head, blood all over the desk, dead. You know what I'm saying? She was dead, okay? We like, who the fuck killed April? You know what I'm saying? Of course, Rebel had to call the cops. And then we got this bitch cop that, you know, so let me get this straight, okay? The, the, the officer, the deceased, shot and killed your brother, <laughs> And you just so happen to be in the neighborhood when she gets shot in the head? Really? Really? And it's just like, bitch, whatever, okay? Like, Rebel was like, look, let me explain to you how this goes, okay? Let me say how you're going to do your job, okay? If you find any evidence that I did anything, then you can put them braces on me. But if not, honey, then you can go and find the person that actually did this. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> you're welcome, okay? Like, it was, a, it was a real check you, bitch type moment. But here's what we discovered. April was shot in the, like, behind the ear, like back here, okay? Who the fuck commits suicide like that? Nobody commits suicide like that. You put the gun to your temple, you put it to the lobe, you put it in this area. You don't just be like back of the ear, bam, you don't really do that, okay? So that's suspect, okay? Meanwhile, TJ, Method Man, uh, sorry, honey, you know I have a thing for Method Man. Um. Bethy man, <laughs> TJ is opening a house for veterans, um, and he gets a call. He gets a call because Kim, one of the veterans that he's been, you know, tasked to taking care of, watching after, she went to, uh, you know, I don't want to say Iraq, Afghanistan, whatever, but they were in war together. 
Rebel, Kim, and TJ. Lauren London plays Kim, just so y'all can have that in y'all head. We miss Lauren London. No, we, we missed her. We ain't seen her in a minute. She just had a baby. You know what I'm saying? She's been on social media, but we ain't really, like, you know, seen her in no movies or nothing like that. So it's good to see you, girl. And then I seen a picture with her and Tip, I think. So I'm like, oh, my God, are y'all going to do an ATL, too? What's going on with that? You know what I'm saying? So, hey, Lauren London. Okay, anyway, so, yeah, TJ gets the call. Like, your girl Kim missing what the fuck. So they got to go look for her. So Kim introduced rebel to tj you know when they were out in war so sad y'all we gonna get to it later anyway y'all samuel l jackson's wife okay <laughs> pop up bitch okay um samuel l jackson's wife is um because i don't i'm sorry i don't know her name i have to i have to find out what her name is i just know i just always remember like seeing her and things like because she was the lawyer in losing isaiah she was uh Halle Berry's lawyer. Mm -hmm. I remember her in that. Um, and, and she's played in a like ton of stuff since then. But anyway, I just always remember that. Oh, she's married to Samuel L. Jackson. And I love when couples be married in Hollywood for years like that. You know, like I love that. Black love. And y'all know I love me some Samuel L. Jackson. So anyway, his wife is Max's new partner. Um, it's all about her grandson, honey. Um, and something about her makes me feel like she's there to watch Max. You know what I'm saying? Or or to, 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 you know, I don't know. Like, maybe there's an investigation going on. I don't know. But something about her tells me that she's going to be perceptive to whatever the fuck is going on with Mac and, you know, dark circles under the eyes and shit like that. The nigga don't look healthy. They have a case together where they go and see this guy and they're asking him about a murder and he doesn't want to talk but then kind of does want to talk and then you know she just so happens to pay attention and be very perceptive and i guess this was setting up that she's a person that is on her shit she read every file case in their district okay so she's not you know before she came there in their precinct whatever you want to call it she on it okay and she figured out that the girl who was around them just kind of like peeping and shit. What you doing, bitch? Why you over here? Um, while they were talking and she was the girlfriend of the guy and they had basically told him that if he said anything, they would kill her. And she kind of gets this out of them and then boom, pow, pow, you know, we didn't solve the case. And then Mac is like, oh, you know, you want to go out for a drink? And she's like, uh-uh, honey, I don't drink. I don't do that, okay? I don't do that and the only man in my life is my grandson. You have a good one. Good night. And that's all that happened. That's all that happened. But that's setting something up, okay? Believe me, that's, that's, a, that's a setup scene. I seen that. That's a little setup storyline for this episode. Anyway, y'all, TJ, Rebel, and Gina go looking for Kim when homeless people be at shit, okay? They find her. She all, you know, you know. When they talk to Kim, they find out that she's been hiding because two of her fellow veterans were killed recently. She believes they were killed and then she believes that she was next, okay? And we like, well, bitch, hold up. Are you being paranoid or is something really going on? Something sketchy is going on around here, okay? Kim got hooked up with some lady named Yolanda who used to work for Veterans Benefits, I guess, you know, for the government. And somehow she got the hookup, okay? So what they would do was they would get veterans to give them their information, set up fake accounts, and then collect their checks from the government. Now, I don't know how that was supposed to help them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it definitely looks like a scam to me. Okay? So, this is what's going on with Kim and the Yolanda bitch. Okay? Now, we're trying to find the Yolanda bitch. We're going here and there. We're going everywhere trying to find this Yolanda bitch. Okay? One of the women named Sherry, they find her. She's dead in the park. What the fuck? Why is Jimmy always popping up? Jimmy old punk ass. Jimmy was out there and the cop, one of the cops, the one with the, you know, the porn stash, that about, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you look like a pedophile? Why do you have that mustache? Like, what is, what's up with that? Like, no, why is that happening? Anyway, he's on the scene. He's been cleared by, um, <clears throat> IA. Like, motherfucker, like she, you know, like, bitch, you killed my brother. Like, what the fuck? Like, I know exactly how many times you shot your gun, you bitch ass nigga. And Jimmy comes and, you know, with his, you know, underlying racist ass breaks the shit up. And the ME is there. The ME is the one that called her. She uh goes to the side and talks to the ME and TJ runs the interference with Jimmy. And she gets a picture of the girl and they take the picture back to Kim. And Kim says, yeah, that's Sherry. And it's like, oh shit, that's Sherry. While Rebel was following that cop, Mac jumps in her car. 
okay? He jumps in her car and tells her that, you know, he really wanted to give her this, especially, you know, what's going on right now. It's Malik's birthday. So he gives her this USB and tells her, you know, to watch it. She tells him that he needs to ask his fucking brother what's up with April, okay? What's fucking good with April, okay? Because she know that April, he was at April's house and he was also at the crime scene. She goes home and watches the video and it's a video of Malik and <laughs> Mac rapping in the park and she cries and really kind of enjoys the moment or whatever and it, it just shows us that Mac and Malik were really friends. Like, you know, they hanging together without her and in he shot at him and now he's dead and, and just the realism of or what the fuck could possibly be going on in somebody's head when they kill you know or cause kind of cause the death of a friend of theirs because they shoot at them like what the fuck is going on in your head like what, what what's happening there you know what i'm saying we still haven't really figured out what's really good with mac and even though mac admits to her later on in the episode that he was having a panic attack because he's been, you know, basically having panic attacks ever since he was stabbed. And that's what happened when he shot at Malik. But it's still, you know, it, it's something is still missing there. Like, I don't know why, but something is still missing. So after she watches that, we, you know, skip over to Mac. And Mac goes and talks to Jimmy and, and asks Jimmy about April. Like, he really can't believe that his brother was cheating on his wife. Like, what the fuck? You know, he didn't kill her, but he was fucking her, you know, basically. And... Jimmy tells him, like, don't be trying to, you know, make it seem like you're so much better than me. You know, all of the fucking Jungle Bunny and uh, Black Queen jokes. Like, what the fuck? Like, pick one. Pick one, motherfucker. You trying to be 40s racial or are you trying to be sarcastic Black Queen and all of this type of shit? Like, what the fuck is you talking about, Jimmy? Like, your ra get your racism together, okay? Decide what your racism really is. Because I feel like you sideways will fuck her. So, I'm going to need for you to get your racism in order, Jimmy. You can confusing me right now okay i don't know whether you you're trying to fuck over somebody or you're trying to compliment him i'm confused jimmy but get it together okay jimmy do that for me he tells mac fuck you because you was fucking rebel when she's still married to her husband that's different they separated which is true which is very true Meanwhile, Gina and Rebel are trying to get this whole situation together with Kim, right? And Gina asked Rebel if she would take TJ back, you know, since he's been helping them with this case. And she kind of leads on it. Probably, yeah, probably would. You know what I'm saying? She's like, you still having sex with him? And he's like, yeah, she's still having sex with him. And she admits that, you know, she did. But she also feels like TJ is different now. Gina ain't trying to hear that shit. And I'm just like, girl, I wonder what he did. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, he's the one that left. But I'm still like, what happened between y'all? When are we going to delve into that? Gina finds out that some money was taken out of Sherry's account four days ago. But she was killed seven days ago. Okay? So, in true rebel fashion, we got to go scope some shit out in the court. So, her and TJ go to the bank that uh, Sherry's account is at. And they peep the scene, being very perceptive. Seem to be, you know, some shit going on between some co-workers over there. Bitch, you look married and that look like your boss and you look like you're flirting with your boss. So we're going to follow them. I'm like, God damn, that's a hop, skip, and a jump, ain't it? But anyway, they go sit outside. They followed her and they sit outside a motel and watch her go into a motel room with her boss. And they take pictures of it and they take it back to her and then blackmail her fucking ask for information. The first thing we blackmail her for is the surveillance tapes. That's when we find out that Kim was involved in the scam on the veteran. And we're very upset with her. TJ wants Rebel to turn her ass in. But she feels like, you know, no, she going through it. She needs help. She need help. The second time we go to blackmail the lady is when we need to find out who was the inside person. Okay? Because obviously, you opening up all of these separate accounts, somebody is going to be like, what the fuck? You know, who? why are they opening up all of these accounts? Somebody is going to red flag that. So they had to have an inside person. Go to her, get the information from her, find out nigga named Jerry. Okay? Jerry said he don't know the bitch. All he know is the bitch was blackmailing him too. Okay? Rebel like, call the bitch, get her down here. Okay? He like, nah, I can't do that. She don't just, you know, she don't listen to me. She just come when she won't come. Hey! Call the bitch, get her down here. Okay? He call her. She come through. And this time, Kim is there. And Kim said, that's her. That's Yolanda. We peep. We see. 
they already met this lady, bruh. This lady's supposed to be running soup kitchen for the homeless people. They went there looking for Kim, okay? So, I'm like, wow, son. You trying to put on like you out here helping people and you out here killing people. Bitch, you crazy. So, you know, they, they you know, get her, get her, you know, boxed in or whatever. And she got a gun out. And Rebel is like, look, I understand, baby. I understand. Apparently, her name is Helen, okay? And she was um in the service she got dishonorably discharged no benefits nothing so she was like fuck that i'm sticking it to the government and rebel is like but baby the only thing you really ended up doing was killing other veterans okay you didn't stick it to nobody you stole a little bit of money but at the end of the day is you ready to leave dead or you ready to leave alive okay she puts the gun down and they take her out alive Rebel has saved the goddamn day. Rebel has her little talk with Kim. Tells her, you know, you need to get your shit together, bitch, okay? And if you need anything, call me. Call me the hour. Call me the minute, the moment, the second. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me baby. I'm sorry, y'all, read that. Um, so, yeah, call her. And then they get into this conversation because she stops her when she's leaving and she's like, how do you not think about what happened? How do you just forget what happened? And we have a flashback and find out that while they were in war, they in this lady's hut and there's two ladies and a baby. And the baby's crying and the men are outside and there's a gunfire and they're getting closer. And you know, they're knocking on the door and the baby's crying and Kim is holding the baby. And Kim must have put her hands around the baby's neck to keep the cry from getting out. And she ended up suffocating the baby. So when the lady goes to get her baby and she sees the baby's dead. And, you know, earlier in the episode when they sat down with Kim to find out what was going on with her. Um, she starts to freak out when the baby starts to cry in a restaurant. And then that's why. Because she feels so damn, you know, guilty about killing that baby. And Rebel tells her, you know, you don't have to carry that on your own. I made the call. You know what I'm saying? I told you to get the baby to shut up. And at the end of the day, that's what you did. But it's not your fault. All your fault. You know what I'm saying? It's both of our fault. So let some of that go and, and give it to me. You know what I'm saying? Take some of that blame off so you can live your life. You know? So it was a real last moment, okay? Uh, Rebel tells TJ that she's very proud of him. Um, for opening up this uh, this housing for the veterans. And they kind of have a little moment, you know. But she's like, mm -mm, honey, got to drop that Tasha bitch, okay? Drop your side bitch. Whole time, whole episode, Tasha been ringing his phone, aggravating the fuck out of him about finding them a place to live together because they were supposed to be moving in. He goes and <clears throat> talks to Tasha and tells her that he don't want to move in with her. And he honestly doesn't think he really wants to stay with her either because he has doubt because he still loves Rubble. And Tasha smacks the fuck out of him and was like, you know, you're still fucking her. And, you know, it's kind of like, that's his wife. <laughs> that's his wife, bitch. Like, that's why you don't get that. You don't try to move in with niggas when they ain't really filed no paperwork yet. That's why. That's why you got to, you know, stop putting the cart before the horse, bitch. You got to take the time. Okay, they got to make moves before you start, you know, committing all of your emotions and shit into somebody. But, you know, Tasha and TJ are no more, bitch. Okay, no more for that alliteration. Let it go. Uh, Rebel goes in to testify um, about some old case. And that's when she ran into Mac. And Mac tells her about, you know, his panic attacks. And she asked him, well, if you had panic attacks, why did you tell... I A that my brother had a gun in his hand or that he was reaching for the gun. He was like, I didn't say that. I said that he dropped the gun and he didn't have a gun in his hand. And she's like, what the fuck? So if he admitted it, like, what the fuck? It was April and her partner, and I think that might have been porn stash, that said that he had a gun. But uh, Rebel goes and uh, does her poetry, you know, about being sisters and, um, and staying lit. And TJ comes through and, you know, without any jokes or sarcasm, lets her know that it was beautiful and that he broke up with Tasha. And it's on and fucking popping with Rebel and TJ. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, y'all, that's what's going on in this episode of Rebel. 
Y'all do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Love you guys. See you in the next one. Oh my mama. mama. Oh my who. Amen. I look fly. Amen. I look good. Amen. Touch my sweat.